that, Rod? What, what is your problem? You don't like the information that uh, UK Column are putting out? So, so what is it that you don't like? Is it their expose of common purpose? Or the secret child courts? Or the illegal activity of the, uh, the bailiffs? The illegal mortgage activity? The exposure of fracking? Well, somebody's got to do it because the mainstream certainly aren't. And the Crane Report, what's the problem with the Crane Report? Oh, biometrics. Biometrics and RFID. Hmm. Well, once again, somebody's got to do it and it might as well be us. And if you think that we are going to pay a fee to be regulated, you've definitely got another thing coming. Goodbye. Atvod, would you believe it? It's unbelievable. The Association Television and Video On Demand. Never heard of them before. Then. Never heard of them at all. Absolutely, completely outrageous. And apparently, the biggest problem they've got is that UK Column are producing television like programmes. Well, isn't everything like a television on YouTube? That's the whole point, isn't it? <laughs> well, you would because think. Television is so diverse. How can you not be like television if you're filming something? I don't understand it. Well, this is this is the thing. It, what they're basically saying is that because the UK column product looks so professional, it's amazing what you can do with smoke and mirrors, of course. Um, but because it's got opening titles, a green screen backdrop that makes it look like a million pound studio and uh, closing credits then that's television like I don't know what to say well, <laughs> it does look a little bit like television I suppose but then I don't watch television really so I wouldn't really know so the thing here is that basically what they are they've been doing apparently is for the last five months they've been trying to get the UK column to sign up to their regulatory body and of course once you sign up then you are effectively subjugating yourself to their regulatory control the problem seems to be that there is no written regular very limited regulatory control because they are making it up as they go along yes that doesn't surprise me at all so so if you sign up to this then they can come and check you and check your content and regulate it that's right literally micro manage the content and um, obviously if we look at their website right now it seems that they've been targeting the the porn industry which might make some yeah. sense uh, because you know one might want to protect uh, young children but the reality is that um, they can't effectively stop the porn because if it's coming in from an overseas right. server yeah. So it looks as though it's one a money making scheme. Yes, and it's expensive, isn't it? I'd look at their charges. It's absolutely <laughs> outrageous. Yeah. So one it's a money making scheme or this is a Trojan horse. They're using the porn industry as the Trojan horse to start regulating content that's put up on the web and I guess that UK column is doing such a good job. Twitched a nerve. It's seriously touched a nerve, it's seriously rattling the cages and um, somebody wants to see it regulated and quite probably eventually shut down. And the way in which they seem to work, Ofcom and uh, probably Atvod now as well, is they create a situation where their target effectively can't afford to keep fighting them and gives up and goes away because it hasn't got the money. Well, I. If these people are going to do this, then I would have thought that they're subject to public accountability. So I had a look at this, and apparently ATFOD uh, aren't subject to Freedom of Information Act, so they're not publicly accountable, even though they're an offshoot of Ofcom, which are part of the Department of Culture, Media and Sport. So essentially, Ofcom is funded by us, though um, I believe ATFOD isn't. But even if it's a public uh, funded privately, if they're carrying out a public function, then they should be subject to the Freedom of Information Act. So let, 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 let me try and understand this. It's a private, not-for-profit company that's an offshoot of Ofcom. It claims it's going to be self-funding, which, from the outrageous fees that um, it, it's looking yeah. to claw, uh, it's pretty evident. It looks like somebody's going to have a very nice lifestyle on mm. the back of this quango. 
But at the moment, they are not subject to freedom of information requests. No, but apparently they have a transparency clause on their website. Um, but I've sent them a freedom of information request anyway, asking about why they've uh, tried to regulate the column and your channel. And, um, and I spoke to the Information Commissioner's Office last week because they oversee the Freedom of Information Act. And uh, the guy I spoke to there seemed to think that that's what should be subject to the Freedom of Information Act. And he said that the Department of Justice has a list of bodies which is listed under Schedule 1 of the Freedom of Information Act, which you can go and see on the internet. And it's a really extensive list of... Where can you find this on the internet? Uh, if, you go, if, you just, if you just type in the Freedom of Information Act, um, you'll go to the legislation.co.uk uh, website and it's under Schedule 1 there. You can click on it, you can see all the bodies that are... are either privately funded or publicly funded but carrying out a public role that we can hold accountable and that bot is not on that list but apparently um, we can try and get it on that list so they are going to be publicly accountable and that's what I'd like to see you know if they're going to effectively regulate the internet then we need to be able to ask some questions about it and why they're doing it I think that's really important I think that's absolutely sound so the critical element here so something that people can do to try and um, uh, get this censorship effectively mm. shut down ultimately but initially they can apply or ask for it to be subject to FOI requests Department of Justice Department can, of Justice yes it has the list and they can put it they have the ability to put bodies on the list so um, I, I need to email the ICO Information Commissioner's Office they're going to make some inquiries and have a look at how we go about that process but anybody can do that Anybody can do it, so... So, basically, you could get all your neighbours to yeah. um, to go onto this website and submit um, a request for uh, AppVod to be subjected to FOI yeah, requests. Definitely. Well, that sounds like a pretty good thing to, to kick off. I think if anything good is going to come out of this, then this should be a good end result. Well, but do you think it's appropriate, Pippa? I mean, obviously, you've been looking at biometrics and RFID. You've been looking at the tracking of people and the agenda that we've been talking about on uh, the uh, that television-like show that ish. I was put <laughs> ish that I was putting out on the UK Column Channel. Mm. And um, I mean, you've seen how these insidious agendas start off in apparent innocence but then of course it wraps the tentacles around and before you know it you're being swallowed whole it's almost too late and but the one thing that stops it is people that's just as simple as it gets if we know about this then we can do something about it that's that's just really as simple as it is so in many respects perhaps in some respects what's happened with the uk column is actually a blessing because uh, I think pretty much uh, probably a couple of weeks ago, very few people had heard of Atvod. That's right, but they'll have heard of it now. And I think they uh, Atvod had a quite a few telephone calls last week. Certainly had one from me uh, that went to answer phone, and they've not rung me back. So I must be on a list somewhere for to ring back. I'll put me on a list anyway. <laughs> well, I, I yeah, the Met Police list probably. Yeah. But the um, uh. Atvod apparently was so inundated with phone calls from I think Wednesday of last week that they uh, stopped answering the phones and just put it to answer phone. So this is a public body that um, is uh, demanding money, and I mean with menaces. Mm. I mean absolutely with menaces. I mean when you when you basically get a letter that says you either regulate with us or we're going to pursue uh, a legal uh, challenge and um, you're facing a fine of up to two hundred and fifty thousand pounds. And of course, what they absolutely rely on is uh, people just capitulating and saying, oh my God, where do I sign? No, they need to be held publicly accountable, definitely. Um, has any, has, have they taken any, anybody to come up with this? Is there any sort of case law? Yeah, yeah, there has been some cases. In fact, I mean, if you look at the Atvod website, they are literally making it up as they go along because they've, they've basically been given a fairly open sort of term of reference. Mm -hmm. You know, cover everything that Ofcom doesn't want to get involved in and maybe even some things that they do, and uh, but write your own rules. And so where there have been some challenges, of course, it's set the legal precedent. And, and primarily, they've been effectively targeting the porn industry because obviously that's an easy mm. target because yeah. most of these porn channels, um, I, I'm told, uh, do actually need payment. So the Black's Law 
legal definition of on demand is with payment. And so, of course, if, you, if you're on a porn channel, then I guess the likelihood is that you've probably got to pay mm. for it. I don't know, do you, do you know? No, I don't know. So, uh, so you've got to pay for it. But uh, UK Column and most of the alternative media, you don't actually have to pay for directly. I mean, UK Column, I think, are, um, asks people to subscribe if they want to participate on the, uh, the chat box. Mm. But the material that is uh, is put out on UK Column is is freely available. Yeah, I I, I understood that that was for the paper, just for the cost of paper. Maybe it's not. I don't know. I mean, well, but you yeah. get that as well. Yeah, yeah. exactly. You get, yeah. you get the uh, the UK Column paper. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very good value. For yeah. Um, but yeah, no, it's it's and it, the government does make it up as they go along. I mean, they really do, and I've had experience of that with the biometrics. They have no clue. I mean, they primarily took a lot of their source material on the subject from my website because I know because I was looking at my stat counter and they were hitting it every day. So, um, so yeah, they, they do make it up as they go along, definitely. So, they, so effectively, they were using you as yes. their unpaid researcher yeah. and then using that as the source material to effectively write their there lack was, of regulation. There was, there was some uh, non-statutory regulations that came out in 2007 after a lot of pressure from parents and uh, privacy organisations and um, yeah my website got hit a, an awful lot by the Department of Education running up to that, those uh, regulations being published and then I sent the Department of Education a freedom of information request to ask what other source or what sources they'd used to write these regulations and they had not used a single source they had not gone to any academia any developers industry they'd never seen uh, it's hardware or software and uh, literally made it up, probably from the information that was on my website. So th this seems to be a sort of fairly common trait within government. So after having signed the Treaty of Lisbon, the UK is now subjected to some 100 and I think it's 112,000 pieces of EU legislation. The EU has actually created more legislation since 1957 than the US of A has since the, it was established in the 18th century. And, and of course it's all being churned out by uh, civil servants. And now what's happening in the UK is they are simply rubber stamping this EU legislation and then writing UK legislation or adapting UK legislation to take this into account. And it do, it's not going through Parliament in any way, shape or form, so we're becoming a total mm. bureaucracy. So I wouldn't be at all surprised if when we speak to any politician, they've never heard of Atbod. Quite possibly, I'd never heard of it before, and I, I had no idea it existed. Um, but now we all know it does, so I think we should all do something about it. Absolutely, and you have demonstrated what one person can do, and I know there's uh, you know there's others that have oh, come yes, forward now. Yeah, yeah. But um, you know, you you were uh, the prime mover on the biometrics case some nine years ago. And you you stayed on that case, and uh, I know there's some others that have come with yes, you. And in fact, yeah. I put out a newsletter um, uh, last night uh, that uh, had an article written by Julie Beal. And uh, Julie, of course, has also uh, been working in similar areas mm. of research yourself. And uh, Julie had done some research in Atvod, and I felt that uh, her contribution was so important that I put that out in a newsletter yesterday. Um, but she's actually going to be coming on a, a future edition of a, well, I don't know, maybe it'll be not very television-like or yeah. something, but, you know, actually, we're going to have a discussion anyway about some of the work that she's been doing on the Internet of Things. But meanwhile, now that uh, we've um, uh, got this opportunity to raise awareness of Atvod, mm. what, what would you encourage people to do? I mean, first of all, obviously, they should go to their website which if I remember correctly is www.atvod.co.uk Go to Atvod, um, ring them up, send them an email, um, send the Information Commissioner's Office an email, uh, start to put pressure on the Department of Justice to get Atvod on the Freedom of Information list that's listed on Schedule 1 of the Act um, and play the long game because they play the long game. They expect you to go away so if you don't get a reply from anybody keep emailing, keep ringing because it is such a long game. They just think you're going to be disinterested and go away. I certainly got that impression when I was dealing with, gov with government in schools. Uh, the, the Information Commissioner's Office is a little bit different. I do find that they're, they're fairly good, want to help, 
but like any body that's there to regulate other bodies, they're underfunded and overworked and understaffed, I feel. Um, but use them because they're good. But so we need to make sure that they're even more underfunded, overworked and understaffed, basically, by uh, literally um, demanding that yeah. they respond to these questions and write individually. I mean, that's the thing yeah. as well, because if you write on, on a sort of mass copied no. email then they just send a mass response so right. but if you write individually and in fact a, a handwritten letter is actually better than an email isn't it because they I think are required to respond to the handwritten letter on an individual basis well, I think more than anything if you can physically pick something up and somebody's taken the time it has a more effect on a human than it does an email yeah. I mean a person I send emails but handwritten letters great absolutely great I think as well because you have to make a, a physical effort to screw it up and put it in the bin if you're not going to deal with it where mm. in an email you can just click delete or yeah. move it into another folder and the app vault offices are in um, a very appropriately named uh, road I, ha I have to be very careful how I say it they are based in sheet street oh, that's wow. sheet S H E E T. Oh, yeah, that's it. That's oh, it. Right, Sheep okay, Street okay. in Windsor, in Berkshire. So oh, nice. perhaps anybody who um, uh, you know is, is in the area, go pay them a visit. Mm. And um, I'm not too sure how close they are, but I think somebody else has a residence in Windsor, if I remember correctly. Uh, yes, I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Who would that be? Oh, somebody who is. Um, uh, suffering some pretty serious <laughs> austerity right now um, she's just forked out a bunch of money for a helicopter for one of her sons oh, yes. but um, there's plenty of she's got a big garden <coughs> in yes, Windsor she does and she has parties in it I believe yeah so I think that uh, you know maybe um, uh, at some not too distant future date we could perhaps convene a party in the vicinity Ooh, of yes. Sheet Street and may, nice. maybe even a camp Maybe even, yeah, uh, you know, good. it's a pretty nice part of the world there on the River Thames. Have to have a look on uh, streets, see if there's room on the verges, maybe on the On the verges, verges. Yeah. Yeah, 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 and set up... Um, that's been successfully done before, hasn't it? It has, it has, yeah. No, the, the Verge Camp, yes, mm. that, it's got good precedents and um, it certainly gets attention. Yeah, yeah. Because what's interesting is that uh, there's a camp not very far away from where we're speaking mm, right now. That's true. And um, East Riding Council have shut the road. Yes. And Which actually makes it safer for the camp because the cars aren't within past 60 miles It an hour. does. Yeah, that's it's true. It makes it, it's actually quite a pleasant mm. environment. It's, uh, it's Crawberry Hill. Mm. If anybody happens yeah. to be up there, it's a very pleasant uh, campsite right now. But of course, the reason they've closed the road is so that the local population who use that road as a bit of a rat run don't see what's going on there and, and don't get too much curiosity. So I think a camp in Windsor, Sheet Street, in Sheet Street or close to Sheet mm. Street might get a bit of attention. Do you think they might shut the road? They might. Right. They might. That would be um, interesting. interesting, wouldn't yeah. it? Very interesting. <laughs> So, gosh, this is this is a bit of a conspiracy potentially going on here. No, no, we're just having a conversation, just general conversation, chit chat. Right? Yeah, no, that's true. Just, just no interview. Just, no, 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 just no. a bit of discussion. Yeah, because yeah, this is definitely not very television-like. No, no, I mean, not this, this is well, it's a green screen, but it's a, a natural yes. <laughs> green screen. It makes a change from being sweltering at thirty degrees plus in the uh, mm. in the studio. Yeah. So, okay, well, look, it's. I have to say, Pippa, thank you so much for um, you know letting me come down to your house today and have a cup of coffee. It's nice to get out of the uh, caravan. Very welcome from uh, Crawberry Hill. Have a coffee with you. Yeah, and uh, well, I think we uh, we need to plan a trip to Windsor, don't we? That would be good. Yeah. That would be really good. Um, I'm just thinking when summer's always a good time. Summer, right? yeah, yeah. After on school holidays, yeah. maybe we'll uh, get a bit of correspondence going with um, Atvod. Um, case the joint and, and look for uh, the appropriate campsite there mm. and uh, then you know just cause I fancy Windsor for a few days at the very nice least. Nice part of the country. Very nice yeah. part of the country. Now in addition obviously there's a lot of television like programs that um, Atvod uh, don't like um, being produced by UK Column but the reality is they've been produced. Mm. So what, what do you think? Do you think it would be a good idea that once we get those programs up on a channel somewhere 
on a YouTube channel, mm. that we should encourage people to download them and repost them, mirror them. I think that would be a grand idea. Excellent. It would, wouldn't it? Yeah. So anything that is um, produced by UK Column, whether it's uh, Humanity versus Insanity, um, which some people know as the Crane Report, uh, or Fracking Nightmare, or Doom Watch, mm -hmm. or Twenty First Century Wire, which is with Patrick Henningsen, mm -hmm. or Clive De Carl's uh, Natural Health Show. Oh, we've got the black helicopters. <laughs> My gosh! I think if that body has got a job to do, then we should absolutely make sure that they have a job to do, uh, and and you know get them to regulate all the sites that have the UK column, humanity. It's insanity, doom report, because they obviously feel strongly enough. So, so let's give them something to do. Let them work for their money. I say exactly, and then let's see how they uh, deal with um, uh, material that is uh, placed on servers based in Iceland, oh, right. which of course has uh, yeah, probably the uh, most liberal uh, freedom um, of the web mm -hmm. there or uh, elsewhere. So let's just spread it around the world. Definitely. I had to host my uh, video about RFID in West Cheshire College in the States because I got chased off YouTube three times, I think, and Vimeo once, and some kind of guy in the States said, I'll host it for you. So now it's up there. So but who, yeah. cha who chased you off in uh, the UK? The college. The, the college. college? Yeah, hounded me. Hounded, hounded you under UK copyright law. Yeah. But then once you posted it offshore, yeah. once you posted it on a US server, it was outside of UK copyright law. Yes. Wow, because so this is interesting, isn't it? Because there's already legislation that uh, these bodies can use, like copyright, like uh, uh, libel, slander, various uh, aspects that um, they could take through the courts. But that board are trying to really be a catch-all, aren't they? Well, let's if they are going to try and do that, let's make them accountable. That's what I say. Okay. It's as simple as that. I, I absolutely concur. So, well, let's see what happens. I think the next few weeks could be very, very interesting. And uh, meanwhile, I think, you know, what I'm going to do is I'm going to wing a few emails out and uh, encourage people that once I've managed to uh, re-upload all the past mm -hmm. episodes of Humanity vs. Insanity and Fracking Nightmare, mm -hmm. I am literally going to encourage people to download them and put them up on as many different channels mm -hmm. as possible. Let's get it out there. And uh, let's say to Atvod, adios, amigo. Definitely. Indeed. <laughs> so, uh, hey, great to talk to you anyway. Yeah, no, it's been lovely, yeah. Drink my, this is uh, uh, iodine. Iodine? Right. Mm. Not them self-medicating or anything, but. It's, no, 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 goodness me. <laughs> oh, what's that? Camera? No camera, no camera here. A camera? No, no, um, no camera, no, no, because no, this isn't, camera anywhere. this isn't studio-like. No, no, not at all, no. No, it and it could be considered on location. On location, I, it, it could be. Mm. But um, if, if perhaps there was a camera, shot, really. it's a bit of a long mm. shot, but what might come up next is the contact information of Atvod and their telephone number and their address. I mean, if, if. There was a camera, a then I might just add that, but it is a bit of a long shot. Yeah.